uh, part, of, part of it. Um, uh, those of you who are Irish would, would have heard about Nile. Neil. Is it Neil or Nile? Nile. I think Nile. it's Neil because of the name. <clears throat> yeah, well, of course, uh, the O'Neills descend from Nile, so it must have been Neil of the, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, of the nine hostages. But um, this book Margaret gave me for my birthday, I've uh, thrilled a bit with it. It's, all, it's known as O'Rahilly, the O'Rahilly book. Uh, it was written about 1940, I think, 42, 43. 45? 45? I looked at it. Oh, you did? <laughs> um, yeah. Pardon? Uh, the title is Early Irish History and Mythology. Thomas F. O'Rahilly, R A H A H I L L Y. But um, you, you, you'll see reference, references to it all the time. In Irish history, they will refer to O'Rahilly as a great, as, a, as an authority. So this particular book is a, is quite a treasure, and uh, she got it on uh, was it eBay or Amazon? Must be eBay. <laughs> eBay. She'd been looking out because she knew that I'd, I'd I'd like that. So it's very good, and um, I wish I could just read it all to you, but it's the page, the um, the power, the chapter on Nile of the Nine Hostages uh, is quite extensive. It's from where? Page 208 to 234. So it's almost 30 pages, about 27, 28 pages. Um, <clears throat> but what I find interesting uh, about O'Reilly's um, version of it, he fills in a lot of the things that we, l we learned as kids. Uh, growing up in Ireland, Nile of the Nine Hostages um, is a romantic figure. Um, they always show him on a white horse, and he was killed by lightning. But we're not quite sure where, except we do know that it was not in Ireland. And uh, we do know that it was in a mountainous area. And uh, some of the school books tell about him being killed by lightning in the Alps. So there's a, a persistent... Um, myth, myth if, you, if, if that's the right word, <clears throat> uh, that he um, that he was like uh, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan. He was a great um, leader and actually formed an empire. So it's hard to know when, where to stop with the romanticism and uh, what was the who was the real the real Neil, but. Starting with the uh, the story that kids are told in Ireland uh, that he was uh, a great king and uh, he was the king who brought back uh, the young Patrick as a slave to Ireland and and that probably is what most people think of when they think of Nile of the Nine, Nine Hostages that he was a a raider and uh, raided the island of Britain um, at the end of the 4th century and early 5th century, namely 380, 90-something and 4-something. <clears throat> so if St. Patrick came to Ireland in 432, which is fairly well documented, and he had been wandering, well not wandering, but anyway, he'd been in Europe becoming a bishop and so on for at least 20 years, maybe better, he would have come to Ireland as a slave at the very early uh, four, 400s. And he may well have been gone for 30 odd years before he came back, because we know he was not a young man when he came back. So um, we, we know that, or we have a fairly good, um, fairly good documentation of Niall dying around 428. So he would have died before Patrick came back as a grown man, as a bishop. Um, and by then, of course, he had uh, um, been succeeded by various sons. And uh, the son who was High King of Ireland was Niall's son, and his name was Lyra. I thought it was his grandson. I think it was his son. I think so. It's generally at least a, and I would never argue with O'Reilly, 
<laughs> I wouldn't argue with O'Neill either, but... <clears throat> um, oh, I did. I did, yeah. So I was brave. Um, oh, he'll spend the rest of his life proving me wrong on that. <laughs> But, um, no, I think O'Leary was his son. Um, and um, his sons uh, pretty well controlled all of Ireland between them. And they, each of the, diff each of the sons inherited different parts of Ireland. And uh, the, the different areas of Ireland bear, are traceable back to the sons of Nile. Like, for instance, one of them was Owen. <coughs> And uh, the other, another one was Connell. And those of you who know a little about Irish history know that the ancient name for the uh, county uh, Tyrone, uh, which would be larger than the present county, although it's a fairly large county, was Tyr, meaning the country of Owen. And Owen was the son of Niall. And uh, Donegal is known as Tyr Connell. Today, today, in fact, <coughs> on Irish maps, it will. It, it won't say Donegal. It uh, is Tyrconnell. So there's a good example of the uh, sons of Nile having inherited sections of a of much, much larger kingdom that that he controlled. And um, there's no doubt that he controlled all of Ireland. He was he was um, he was a very powerful king. He uh, he. Um, control. Not only all of Ireland, but uh, there's very, very strong evidence that he controlled a great part of Britain, certainly all of Scotland, and right down well into, uh, into southern England. So we don't know how much. And of course, then there's some evidence a little less compelling, but certainly there in tradition that he not only controlled both islands, but had quite a, a large hunk on the continent as well. And the, the, the possibility that that may be true uh, is based on uh, not only the uh, traditions associating him with those people, places, but that he followed the retreating, receding Roman Empire, Romans. And <clears throat> we do know that the Angles and the Saxons didn't come in till later. The Romans were um, quite well gone before the Angles and the Saxons came in. So the island of Britain would have been in a state of vacuum that the, the Romans had withdrawn and there really wasn't any um, strong native power. Uh, whereas Ireland had been uninvaded by the Romans uh, had a very strong uh, chieftain system and a very strong high king uh, kingship system and would have been much, much stronger than the native inhabitants of the island of Britain because they had been subjugated for 400 years, which is a long time. <clears throat> so it's perfectly um, possible that he was able to dominate, if not all large sections of the island of Britain, because, as you know, the old uh, Celtic, whatever you want to call them, inhabitants of Britain were pretty well wi wiped out uh, much earlier than that, shortly after uh, the time of Christ. And uh, Boudicca, uh, you know, was really the last great queen. And in France, uh, Versagentrix, you know, would have... So that, so that the Celts, the, the old... Um, chieftainship system was almost forgotten by Niles' time, as, uh, by the, uh, say, the year 400, when the Romans were in, re in retreat uh, out of the island of uh, Ireland, or Britain, rather. Um, so it's perfectly uh, possible that um, the, an Irish king would easily, maybe not even have been resisted may even be welcomed because they were bringing back some of what had been theirs prior to Roman time. So may have been very well um, received by the, the uh, essentially old Celtic peoples of Britain. And it's interesting that the, um, 
the, the hostages that he did bring back and Patrick wasn't a Celt as such, he was a Roman. So he was, um, he perhaps didn't burn villages, he raided Roman strongholds, which of course made a lot of sense because they had a lot more to raid and, and to bring back. So, uh, so all of that would, would fit quite well. Um, the more modern Christian interpretations of him, um, actually, I think that's where they, have it, him having been killed in the Alps may have originated from the scribes and the monks in, at later times because they uh, say that he was helping the Romans, that the reason he was in, uh, in the uh, Alps and in the, um, the Rhine Valley and the Danube area there 